Welcome to our presentation on Return to Learning, the start of phased in in-person instruction, stage five for high school. I'm Brian Lawbaugh, Deputy Superintendent, and I'm thankful you could join us today. Along with me are a couple of individuals that will help out with answering questions in the question and answer box on uh, Zoom, and also um, help at the end when we have live questions and answers. We are recording this presentation and we'll have it posted to our district website on the returning return to learning page on um, either this evening or tomorrow morning. Next. Success will be measured in the ability of everyone to do their part in completing the morning skyward wellness screening, which we'll go over later in the presentation, wearing masks, hand washing, maintaining social distancing, and following the instructions of staff members. We're all in this together. Please use the question and answer function to answer to ask your questions. All participants will be on mute. We'll stop occasionally to answer questions and some will be answered in the question and answer box. At the end of the webinar, we'll answer any questions we can with the time remaining. Um, the webinar is for an hour. The webinar again will be posted to the district's YouTube channel and linked to the website. We follow our six stages of return to learning. This was developed um, and revised uh, throughout the year, most recently in December when the um, governor changed and the Department of Health uh, changed guidance around what made high, moderate, or low level in terms of a return to learning. So we've used this guide um, to help us bring back various levels of students. Um, we began bringing elementary and preschool general education students under stage two. And we began with middle school students uh, yesterday on March 1st under stage four. Under stage five, we'll be bringing in ninth graders on March 8th, 12th graders on March 11th, and 10th and 11th graders on March 15th. Since, December, or since October 1, we have been serving uh, special ed students on site. Uh, more are to be expected um, to be served on site as we bring general ed students in um, as well. And we are monitoring the number of COVID cases uh, per 100,000 over a 14 day period. Currently that is well below 200, which puts us into the middle of the moderate stage and um, allows for the return of um, high school students. Next. Because we are monitoring both um, COVID transmission um, in the county and trying to maintain um, safety and being precautious, uh, following the precautions of the Department of Health, um, we need to follow a hybrid schedule with our students. Um, we have to maintain six foot distancing amongst students and maintain um, smaller class sizes in order to meet the uh, Department of Health decision tree matrix and um, their guidance from the state of Washington. So right now we are considering ourselves to be in stage five. Next. So in stage five, we'll bring all nine through 12 grade students in. They'll participate in two days of instruction per week on site. Um, Teachers will be on site four days a week to deliver in-person instruction and there'll be are up to or around 15 students per classroom. And as I said a little bit earlier, um, on Monday, March 8th, we'll bring ninth graders in on a Thursday, March 11th, 12th grade, and then on Monday, March 15th, 10th and 11th grade. So high school students will participate in what's considered an A-B schedule. This is what we've been doing in elementary. That's also what we are doing in middle school and we'll do it as well in high school. As we shift, um, students will alternate days for in-person learning. Most students will participate in two days of learning and three days of online independent learning at home. We are initially scheduling by alphabet, but may change due to balancing classes and keeping students in their original schedule. So we follow the same A through L um, grouping in A and M through Z in B as the elementary and the middle schools have done. 
Some families have chosen to have their students remain 100% virtual and our schedule accommodates those students as well. Students will be on site from 10.50 to 2.10 p.m. Buses will begin picking up students at 10 a.m. on the day they're to attend school. Next. So this is a busy graphic of how the schedule works for group A and group B. This will be posted to our return to learning page. You can look at it in more detail. Um, on Monday, March 8th, group A ninth graders will start attending. And then on Tuesday, um, ninth graders group B will start attending. So you'll see group A is over on the left and group B is on the right. Uh, periods one through four are on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday we have periods five through eight. This is to accommodate the um, grouping of students by last name. And then Friday would be a, another group of students doing periods one through four. Um, all students, students including those who are virtual and those who are coming in person later in the afternoon, attend classes in the morning. And then in the afternoon, uh, depending on which group you're in, you either attend school or you remain home and uh, be taking part of virtual instruction at home. You kind of see the flip of the schedule in the afternoons for whether you're in group A or group B. Next. For virtual students, they um, attend school as they have been since the start of school, attending classes in the morning and then in the afternoon doing independent learning or what we call asynchronous instruction. We have built in time on Tuesdays and Thursdays for virtual support for students who are working independently at home um, because they will have contact with their teacher during that period of time or on Wednesdays which all students are virtual on Wednesday, I'm starting with advisory and then going to virtual classroom support for the remainder of the day on Wednesday. So just to go back over that schedule and those again will be posted to the district website under the return to learning page. Um, students will attend in-person learning on Monday and Thursday or Tuesday and Friday. When students not attending in-person learning, students will participate in asynchronous instruction or independent online schoolwork. On the day students attend, they will attend a partial day, about two thirds of the school day. If you're 100% virtual and you remain remote, students will be assigned time with a teacher for synchronous instruction. Um, every morning there is time for students to participate in their classes with all of their classmates. The other part of the day will be asynchronous instruction independent online school work. Um, students will not attend school in the building. Um, there is time built in the schedule for the virtual only students to connect with their classroom teachers. You saw there on that schedule for the virtual 2.30 um, to 3.30. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we have been serving uh, special ed students um, on site since October 1. They'll continue to attend under the new model. Students will follow their second semester schedules. And as more students attend in person, special ed students will be able to interact more with their general education or, or peers. As um, if your student's not being served currently on site, you will be able to begin, uh, but you need to be in contact with your student's IP, IEP case manager. Next. So what we're doing in secondary, which is a little bit different if you have an elementary student, is that we're asking that parents or students fill out the Skyward Wellness Screener daily. Um, and you check your student daily for symptoms of COVID-19 before sending them to school on site. And we'll have a little video here to remind you about how to do the daily wellness screener and family access of Skyward. When they arrive to school, we will be checking to make sure that they've completed the screener. If they've not um, completed the screener, we will do that screening for that student prior to them entering the building. Um, and this, uh, there is no need if a student's uh, attending school remotely to uh, conduct the wellness screener. This is for students attending school on site.
It's not just students doing school in a different way. Now parents or caregivers of secondary students are getting a new assignment. It's called a wellness screening. The simple two-part questionnaire must be completed every day before your middle or high school student is scheduled for in-class learning at school or participating in any other on-campus activity. Middle and high school students also have the capacity to complete the wellness screener on their own. To find the wellness screener, go to the Skyward Family Access page. If you've never logged into Skyward, you'll need your login and password. If you don't have it, please call your school. To find Skyward, go to the Clover Park School District webpage. Click on the Parent tab, then click on Skyward Family Access. From here, you'll enter your login and password. Once you've logged in for the first time, you can set up a new password that's easy to remember. Just make sure you don't share it with your student. You can also download the free Skyward mobile app on your cell phone. Go to the App Store or Google Play and download the app. Follow the setup prompts, which includes choosing the Clover Park School District and setting up a four-digit code, which acts as your password. The mobile app is a quick and easy way to get into Skyward. Now it's time to answer the wellness screening questions. From the Skyward Welcome page, look for Wellness Screening and click on it. You may need to scroll down to find it on the mobile app. You'll be asked two questions. Answer the questions for each middle or high school student in your home and then click on the Save button. If you check Yes for either question, you'll receive a red caution sign that asks you to keep your student home. You'll get a follow-up phone call from the school later that day asking about your student. If you answer no to both questions, you'll get a green check mark. That means your student is good to go for the school day. These questions must be answered in the morning before school. For the safety of all students, we need this done every day your secondary student has in-class learning. If you forget, your student will need to go through a temperature screening at school before they're okayed for class. Thanks for your help. Together, we can keep students and staff safe as we all return to learning. So attendance remains crucial um, and important to us and important to your students' um, well-being at school. Teachers will continue to take daily attendance. Students' absence will be considered unexcused. Students are present and in-person attendance on the hybrid schedule participating in independent learning on scheduled days, and participating in live remote instruction. Parents and guardians will need to contact the school to excuse an absence. Um, we will continue to send out school messenger calls two times a day to let you know if your child hasn't attended class that day in the morning or in that afternoon. One thing to uh, remind families about and uh, guardians is that Students do need to be immunized and be compliant with their immunizations prior, prior to attending school on site. Um, so if you have not, um, if you've heard nothing from essentially your school nurse, you're good to go. Um, but if you have heard from your school nurse looking for a particular vaccination, um, you will need to make sure that you have completed that before the student can attend school on site. Immunization is not the same as the COVID vaccination though. We're not requiring any COVID vaccination. This is about like MMR, or, uh, mumps, measles, rubella shot, uh, being compliant with those parts of the state law um, in terms of having students on campus. If you have any questions about your student's immunization compliance, please make sure to contact your school's health room. Um, and there are some additional um, pieces of information on the district website by returning, uh, clicking on the return to learning tab and selecting immunizations from the left na navigation bar. Please check your child's immunization records and if doubt, please make sure you consult with your healthcare provider. Buses um, will be providing transportation for students who need to get back and forth um, to school, to high school. Uh, the schedules are posted on the district website. Um, in the chat box, you'll see a link to the uh, bus route schedule um, put up by transportation. Um, you can click on that link and it'll take you to that um, transportation and what time um, 
buses will be at particular bus stops in your neighborhood. Um, bus drivers wear face coverings and um, we expect students as they um, board the bus also to wear face masks. If there is not a face mask, um, extra face masks will be provided uh, to students when it's missing. Next. So our buses will be loading from the back to the front. Um, students will have assigned seats. Family or students who are in the same family may be seated together. Um, buses will operate per the published schedule, which you see the link in the chat. Um, Z Pass is something new for high school students. If your student was recently in middle school, um, they'll be familiar with the Z Pass. Z Pass is a ridership um, car that um, monitors students um, getting on the bus and students getting off the bus. So it tells us where they got on and where they got off. Um, Z Pass cards will be issued within the first week of in person learning at the high school. A Z Pass card will be required anytime that a student is riding a school bus. Um, this is new for students at Lakes and at Clover Park. Um, students um, are asked to bring their school issued electronic devices in their uh, in their cases or backpacks and have those devices charged and ready to go for the day. But that's not really the um, oops, it's moved ahead. <laughs> and uh, what we're saying here is that we just need them to uh, take care of any uh, business that may happen in class. This is not the form of instruction. But if you're to write a paper, perhaps, or um, need to do a spreadsheet in Excel, you'd have a device available to you. Uh, we are not sharing uh, desktop computers when a student's at school. So you might be in a career and technical ed class that requires you to use a device. And so uh, while you're in class, you'll have access to your personal device that has been checked out to you. Next. So school supplies, students may bring school supplies um, in their backpack along with their uh, laptop. Um, there'll be no sharing of those school supplies by um, the students. Um, we'll also recognize that our students um, are using school supplies at home. If, you, um, if your student is in need of supplies, they will be available in the classroom. But we're saying, yes, you could bring some school supplies, but for sure, if you need some, um, we will have those at school. So arrival procedures. This may be, this is sort of a blanket sl slide to say that the arrival procedures at your school will be dependent on your school. So when you um, get messaging from your school, they will tell you how uh, the students will enter the building. If they get off the bus, um, if you're dropping them off, or if they're walking to campus, um, if they're riding their bike to campus, or in some cases with high school students, if they're driving to school. In any case, a student before entering a building will be met by a staff member to confirm wellness screening. Any student who does not pass that wellness screening or feels ill later in the day will be moved to a room separated from classmates until a parent or guardian can pick them up from school. As we continue to monitor um, the health and wellness of our staff and our students. Um, there's really minimal access to the campuses to anyone who's not a student or staff member. As um, many of you are aware, our exterior doors are locked after school begins and that if you need to visit our school sites, you must check in at the main offices. Um, staff will continue to wear their identification badges. Um, there may be some adjusted pickup and drop off routines at your school. Again, they'll let you know what those are, just making you aware that there'll be something different. All students and staff must wear face coverings except during eatings, during check-in and check-out. Parent access is limited. Check with your student's school on what those limitations will be. Several of you may have had your students participate in high school athletics. Um, we began those back on February 1 with football and then the other sports listed there on February 8th. Um, that season, season one is coming uh, close to a close on March 14th. 
our season two will start in March on March 15th with baseball, fast pitch, boys soccer, golf, tennis, track and field, and swim and dive for boys. So that is um, season two. And then you can see season three. Um, season three um, may for sure will have swim and dive boys at Clover Park and then um, bowling and gymnastics. Um, we don't have gymnastics. I always forget to take that off this slide, but um, we'll have bowling, basketball and cheerleading, which um, cheerleading with stunts or dance and drill with stunts and wrestling will not happen in season, season three unless the state of Washington moves to phase three. Otherwise, if we remain in phase two by the governor's re, uh, return plan, um, the only sports in season three would be bowling, um, swim and dive for boys at CP. As a reminder, both leagues have determined um, to not have spectators at events. Events are broadcasted on the NFHS network or Eli Sports. Check with your student school for more details. The monthly subscription to view live stream video is $10.99 per month. Just a reminder, Lakes is in the Pierce County 3A League. Clover Park is in the South Puget Sound League. Um, Cheer and dance are allowed to perform at football games and may be allowed to compete in season three based on Pierce County and state guidelines. I'm at Harrison Prep. There are no athletics. Uh, your students participate in either uh, the Lakes Athletics or the Clover Park Athletics, uh, depending on which part of the district you live in. And our clubs will continue to work virtually at this time. So any clubs that are meeting, uh, the students see that in advisory on the uh, announcement they get join codes for those clubs and can attend those virtually. All right, next slide. So in our safety protocols, every student um, in the district has been provided, uh, will get provided uh, two cloth fast mate, or sorry, two cloth face masks for the dis, uh, for the remainder of the year. Our staff wear a new KN95 mask daily. In some of our classroom staff members will be wearing additional uh, PPE. And we are looking to maintain six foot distancing as much as possible. That's how our classrooms have been set up and then in the hallways, um, how we're um, monitoring student traffic. Next, as a part of our safety protocols, we've also been working on increased daily cleaning and disinfecting of high traffic areas. Um, restrooms and health rooms are uh, disinfected twice daily and we've purchased new UV sanitizers uh, to use where a space has been impacted by um, per, uh, perhaps somebody who is ill. Um, I will move on. And we also have signage around the, in the classrooms about hand washing, making sure that um, that occurs, your six foot distancing. Water fountains are available for uh, water bottle or cup filling. Um, they are considered high touch areas and are cleaned uh, periodically throughout the day. Uh, parents may send refillable water bottles to school with their children. Additional safety protocols that the high schools have put in place as well as the middle and elementary schools is directional signage as they move throughout the school. Students will exit classrooms to the right and students will maintain six foot social distancing. You can see this floor marking here is at um, Thomas Middle School showing you which way students should travel and which side of the hallway they are traveling on. Due to safety protocols put out by the Department of Health, uh, students will not use any school lockers, nor will they have access to the locker rooms um, in, at the gyms. Um, it's out of safety. Um, anything that a student needs to have, they will be carrying in their backpack. Um, uh, there are lockers though at Harrison Club Park, but they will not be using those lockers in the hallways. There are new safety protocols in place from the Department of Health as well for PE classes, music classes, including band, orchestra, and choir, art classes, and drama and theater classes. Um, our classroom teachers, our school administrators are working on plans to make sure that, um, that that guidance is followed. And based on that guidance we've received, um, we'll be moving back to a modified version of instruction in both in all of those areas, PE, music, art and drama theater. 
We will continue to provide uh, lunch on site for those students who are coming on site. Um, they'll eat in their classroom at the high school level. Uh, students in remote learning will be able to go to a community distribution location, which is often the uh, closest school to where you live, um, and pick up a lunch and a breakfast. Um, often that is the elementary school in your neighborhood. Um, and lunch and breakfast will be provided to all students for free as we have um, a continued waiver from the US Department of, of Agriculture to provide free and community free community lunch and breakfast. Uh, weekly meals are also available and there's additional information on the district website to order a weekly meal. We also maintain some strict protocols around um, notifications when we learn that a student has become sick or a staff member has become sick. As per HIPAA, we're not going to identify any individual, but we will certainly make sure families and staff know of any exposed students and be directly notified by phone or email or letter. Um, we have been doing that since the beginning of the school year. Um, this process has become more refined over time. Um, once we know um, where that exposure has occurred, any deep cleaning or additional cleaning that's needed in that impacted area will take place. Weekly, uh, the super superintendent banner puts out a message to families talking about what's occurred um, in the previous week and in the week to come ahead. Um, we'll continue to uh, send out that information every week to families. Um, there is always more information on our district website, um, cloverpark.k12.wa.us. So now we can take some questions and answers. You're ready? All right. So, um, this is a great question about what are the phone electronic policies when they are at school? And this I'm assuming could be from a brand new student, maybe a ninth grade student. So best ideas on where to um, send that student for answers. Uh, I would believe the best place to get that answer is at the school once, um, I think there'll be some notifications coming out of the high schools about their policies. Um, a reminder, probably an advisory tomorrow as well about what's allowed and what's not allowed on campus. Great. Um, will students bring their school instrument, band instruments to school? More to come about band instruments, but if you have your band instrument right now at home, um, just keep it at home. Um, we'll let you know um, in the weeks to come um, as we refine our plan about music, uh, band and orchestra, um, but right now, just leave that at home. Okay. Um, the next question um, is: there is there a way to see what schedule my son is currently on? I requested a change a while back, and don't want to bother anyone if it was already changed. We thank you for your patience. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> for your uh, being patient. If it's a class schedule change. Um, I would make sure I get in contact with the school counselor because they are working on balancing some of those classes right now. So this would be a great time to send an email to your um, student's school counselor. Okay, this one says remote learning at home starting at 730 for any, everyone, then based on your cohort, you'll either stay online or home or go to school at 1115. Is that right? Yes. All right. Boy, and we put the schedule back up on the screen for everyone too. Yeah, that's you really do. helpful. Um, yes. I do want to point out though, that right now they've been starting at 7.30, but if you look over on the schedule, <laughs> there's a five minute surprise, but probably not in the direction you wanted it to go. So we're going back to our original high school schedules that will begin at 7.25. But you know, it's getting to be spring. It'll be bright and sunny when you wake up soon. <laughs> okay, what about a special needs bus? Um, the, if you are already um, on a special needs bus and being transported to school, you'll stay on that schedule. It just bumps up an hour. Um, if you have questions about that, please reach out to your student's um, case manager. They'll have more information about that. That's great. And for, for all other bus schedules, I did put that in the chat, but if you missed that and you couldn't find it in the chat, please go to the school district's main 
website, click on the parent tab at the top and then scroll down to bus routes and then you can find out there. See, look at that right there, parent Not tab. And then it's just like, I say it and it happens. This is so great. And there it, it comes up and at the very bottom, you'll see um, Harrison Prep and Clover Park and Lakes. All right, I have another question. Are there currently any activity buses for athletes? Uh, there isn't at the moment, but they will be beginning once students are on site. So that'll be start the week of March 8th. All right, so, um, and this might be from individual schools, but we totally get it for all of you incoming freshmen. I mean, you've been a freshman for a while now, but you've never been to high school. And so the question is, will there be any type of orientation for incoming freshmen? Another question was, will there be anyone helping us find our way to class? Well, I think we've got some good people who are helping out with the Q&A on the, uh, the presentation who should be able to get that, uh, uh, Brianna Kelly, who is uh, Clover Park High School, and Kevin Rupert, who's uh, at Harrison Prep. Um, I've heard that question, and maybe we'll be able to work something out for some orientation of campus. I know it's hard at both Lakes and CP and at Harrison Prep, but they're both all three big campuses. Uh, just knowing where your classrooms are is a challenge. And my daughter's one of the executive mentors at Lakes, and I will make sure she knows about that tonight as well. Yeah, we get it. It's it's a whole new thing. Yes. Okay. If you start hybrid and it just doesn't work for you or your family later on, can you stop hybrid and go back to online at any time? Yes. We need to let your school counselor know that you want to return to virtual full time. That is not totally possible. Um, as you're saying with your same teacher, right? So the question would be more about whether you want to attend school on site. That would be more challenging for us. Um, we are trying to keep class sizes to that um, class size around 15. Some of our rooms take only a certain number of students at six foot distancing. So um, moving back to or staying at virtual 100% um, isn't um, is a possibility, but our school counselors would need to know that. Oh, I saw uh, the okay. principal from Lakes that's been on the chat as well. Oh, good. He said the mentors would be there to help students find the class classes. So wonderful. Great. One of the questions that came up, and then I'll, I, I will talk about this, um, a bus, another bus question, but one of the questions came up about dress code. Uh, the question being, is dress code still going to be enforced? That's my favorite question, dress code. <laughs> <laughs> one place to go review the dress code is in the uh, parent family handbook. Parent family handbook is posted in Skyward Family Access. And there is a page devoted to dress code and um, the family handbook. I think that's a good place to go and review things before sending your student to school on site. All right, um, question. My, my child's last name starts with an M. Does that mean they start school on the eighth or the ninth? So as a ninth grader, if your last name starts with M, you would start on the ninth on Tuesday. All right, great. So this is, where do we locate bus information if our street is not listed? And I also realize that we have some military families who have just moved into the area and others who have, might have um, changed locations due to all kinds of things happening. And so they may not be familiar with the area. So how do they find their, their correct bus if it's not on their specific street? So a good place to start is at transportation. Their direct phone number is 253-583-5494. That's 583-5494. Great, and they can also help you with that. Um, let's see, I'm, I, let's, oh wait, here's another one, sorry. I saw on one of the schedules that virtual students, whoops, will have students support with their teacher from 2.30 to 3.30. Yes, that would be after the school day. Another question that was asked was, is this new content that will be um, taught when kids get to school or is this um, an opportunity for them to go over what they learned in the morning? So it would be part B of what you asked. It would be more about going more in depth about what they learned um, or the instruction from the morning, but also an opportunity to do um, engaging 
dialogue with other students about that concept. Um, there may be some hands-on opportunity, depending on the class, um, to engage in that learning, but it's not new learning, it's connected learning. So whatever was presented on the AM session would be extended in the afternoon, both virtually as well as in person, right? So the student is doing independent um, asynchronous work, they are also extending what they learned in the morning as well. Here's a, a good question. Um, since 10 to 11.15 is considered travel slash lunchtime, can students choose to arrive, say if a student is driving, can they arrive at 11.15 when period one begins? Maybe yeah. a little before what, 11.15? Yeah. <laughs> All three schools are pretty big. I would take a while perhaps to, you wouldn't want to just show up at 11.15. Uh, how about uh, 11 05 would be a good time to show up so that you can get to class i don't know i have my daughter drives so like so who knows what time she gets there but we'll see for high school students uh when does school start and end so for all high schools uh, for lakes and clover park so this is a schedule for lakes and clover park so if you're a harrison prep you're a high school student at harrison prep the day starts a little bit later um, there's a different schedule that will be posted for the Harrison Prep high school students. Yeah. But if you were to look at the start and end times for Lakes and CP and Open Doors, our students seem to go to Open Doors as well. The day starts at 725 and ends at 210 um, with a combination of both being virtual and in person or all virtual depending on which day you attend. Um, at Harrison Prep, students start at um, their morning classes, uh, virtual classes at 8.45, and then their day ends at 3.15. All right, I, I am glad we have that schedule up. Um, I think there's still a little bit of confusion. Um, this question, can students choose which classes they want to attend in person, or do they attend all classes? So you, um, if you're on A day, let's just go for group A here on Monday, you're gonna attend periods one through four in the morning, you're going to start period one at 725 and be there till eight and then 805 you'll move to period two this is all done virtual this is how they've been doing it to date if you are in group a with your last name in a through l you'll have a little bit of trans transition period if you're being dropped off or you're walking to school or riding um, a bike to school um, but you'll be or if you're riding a um, bus you'll have to follow the bus schedule um, but the buses will start picking students up around um, 10 o'clock or 10 in the morning to get them there. Some of our bus rides are fairly long um, to get them there in time for 11.15. So once you get to school at 11, hopefully a little before 11.15, let's say 11.05, uh, you're going to pick up a lunch and um, take that lunch to your first period class. Then you'll rotate from your first period class to your second period class to your third period class and then to your fourth period class at 210 you'll be released to go home either be picked up walk ride your bike or get on school bus and head home if you're staying after school for extracurricular activities um, to participate in athletics or such you would be following the schedule of your sports team not all sports teams start at 2 30 so depending on which sport you're uh, participating in there are different start times for that so be pay att paying attention to that if you're a group b student like um, your last name is m through z you're attending the same class periods as the students in a through l everybody if you're virtual only you're only going to come to school virtually you're all in the same classes together in the morning then in the afternoon um, you will be a, as a um, on Monday, you'll be doing independent learning for the, all those same four classes you were in in the morning. So we try to just build the time where you would have lunch and then you would do independent learning um, for the remainder of the day. If you're in through Z on Tuesday, um, one piece to note on these schedules is um, periods five through eight are on Tuesdays and Thursdays and periods one through four are on Mondays and Fridays. Okay, question about PE. I have a couple of them. Kind of one of them is just how P is PE going to work? And another thing is when kids are in PE, um, 
recognizing that they haven't been doing a lot of athletics or running and jumping, and it may be a little difficult with the mask, is that still a requirement to wear the mask for PE? So PE will tend to be more individualized sports, um, low, um, what are considered low risk sports, um, like badminton or pickleball, uh, walking, uh, stretching, health units, uh, nutrition units, uh, Personal fitness units will be um, what really occurs in PE. We will not be doing any high risk sports like football or basketball um, where there's close contact. We have to maintain six foot distancing in PE. So it'll be on any sport where it's considered a low risk sport. So um, walking is an example of a low risk sport. Um, here's a, a little bit of confusion as well, and I totally get it. This is a whole new schedule for them. When is lunch for high school? I was confused because we have lunch block, but then you also said something about eating lunch in class. Well, you, correct. So when you arrive to school, you'll be picking up your lunch, and then you'll take your lunch directly to your first period class. And while class is going on, you'll be able to have lunch, um, but there's no lunch in the cafeteria of high school. Are the teachers the same for synchronous morning and in-person in the afternoon? Correct. So if you have Mrs. Johnson's for band at Lakes for period one, you'll see her later in the afternoon for period one, Mrs. Johnson for band. All right. Um, uh, with sports, do we still need to wear masks now that we're in phase two? Yes. So all our athletic uh, Athletics uh, require students to wear masks um, and masks while you're uh, practicing and also while you're participating. So this is a question near and dear to my heart because I had swimmers, I get it. Um, I don't know if you have the answer for this, but she thought she would ask, swim meets are not currently available to stream. Will future meets be streaming via NFHS network? That's something I, I don't know necessarily the answer to that question. We'll have to um, do a little more research on that one. Um, it's a little bit about where one would install a camera. So not necessarily in the pool. We've uh, been working on installation of cameras in the two main gyms at uh, Lakes and Clover Park and then in the stadium. Can my students wear a face shield instead of a cloth mask? Um, we prefer that they wear a uh, cloth mask. Uh, that's what we're providing all our students. Okay. Um, do we need to get a lunch packet or is it optional? Uh, you don't have to eat lunch at school. No, it's just optional. Okay. Um, okay. Again, there, there's the I, I get it. There is some confusion, and we may have answered it, but I'd rather everyone get the, their questions answered than leave someone hanging. So yep. the question is: for the students that go to school on their certain days, do they attend online school first at seven twenty-five as well? Yes, we're okay. going to get a full day's worth of instruction in one way or another, <laughs> online or in person, or both. The question, so will some, will students be starting some classes earlier? I mean, I think that our classes are a little shorter in length than a typical day, but. Yeah, there's a little, but, and actually the, the morning schedule is a little bit shorter than it has been to date, right? So um, those periods are shorter. Uh, they're more, um, they're 35 minute periods in the morning and then they're a little bit um, longer in the afternoons, so there are 40 minutes in the afternoon. Okay, this is another question that we, we may not have all the answers for, but we, we might have some. What is being done for teachers or staff who aren't yet comfortable going back until the vaccine vaccination is available, such as any high risk teachers? So they work with um, human resource, our human resources department and determine um, what they can do. I um, recently, just today, Inslee, the governor, announced a roll-up or a change in the vaccination plan. So more to come on that. Uh, but that just got announced maybe an hour before we got on this uh, meeting. Uh, but they work with HR um, 
and we look at what can they do, where can they serve, and if they can't uh, serve on campus, uh, then other arrangements are made. All right, this says that the class ends at 10 and that the buses start picking up the kids at 10. Hmm, hmm. how do I make sure I get there on time without missing lunch or class time? Now, I didn't look at, I haven't looked at the high school bus schedules. Are they that close? Well, this on this schedule that we are looking at on, it says that period four ends at 10 a.m. like on this Monday, right? And then yeah. travel time to school at 10 a.m. to 11.15 looks like the bus schedules, most of them start picking up kids around. The earliest I saw for Clover Park in a quick scan was 10.06. Uh, most of them are around 10.20 to 10.30 for Clover Park. And well, 10.06 would be tight. So please uh, notify your teacher spot. that you have yeah. to catch the bus. Yeah, and then the lakes uh, looks like the earliest at lakes is Oh, that can't be right, one of them. I'll have to check on bus 658. That seems a little too early, 925. But might have to look at that one. Um, it's a good thing you asked me to go look at this. Uh, yeah. It's like the earliest uh, is 1017 for legs. I will have to talk to them about bus 658. Okay, so if you're on bus 658, don't panic. We're yeah. going to work on that. Um, <laughs> This was a question that was asked earlier and I said that we would, I answered it part, partially, but I would love for you to answer it live. And I know we may not have all the answers, but it really has to do with um, graduation and they have family coming from out of town. They, is this gonna be live? Is it gonna be in person? Is there a possibility that some portions could be virtual? How? What are the possibilities for how that might look as, as people really are trying to make plans with relatives? So we are, uh, there is a committee of uh, high school administrators and then we're getting some input from students as well about the, what they would like to see for uh, graduation uh, ceremonies that take place. Graduation currently set for June 10th for Lakes and Clover Park and then June 11th for Harrison Prep and Open Doors. Um, we are restricted again by the state's um, phased return, right? So in phase one, um, of course it wouldn't be possible. In phase two, um, there are limits on the group size of 200. Um, so we're looking and investigating all the opportunities we have reserved and we have Coma Dome and uh, reserved for Lakes and CP on June 10th, um, if things are to be able to relax by that time. Um, we do have um, the McGavick Center over at Clover Park Technical College reserved for Harrison Prep and Open Doors. But again, it's all based off of the governor's uh, phased return. Right now we're in phase two um, and he hasn't uh, announced or Department of Health and governor have not announced a phase three. So um, we're gonna be paying attention to all that information. Um, and then looking at what options we have uh, to do either if we could do any in-person activity um, and if um, we can, what, that, what does that look like? So um, we're gonna be talking to students about that and talking to staff about that and monitoring the governor's uh, return plan as well. So we stay don't know tuned. everything yet. So no, stay tuned. Really, if, you, if we were to say it was gonna to happen tomorrow, we'd have to say, no, we couldn't do it. So we, um, Open Doors has an awarding of diplomas. Uh, and they did that the first part of February, and we did have to do a recording of that, and send out a video link on our YouTube channel for that uh, awarding of diplomas ceremony, because at the time, the state was in phase one. So we follow those um, guidance from the state, from the governor and the Department of Health, um, and we keep monitoring that, and we're aware that people would like to have it uh, in-person option. Uh, my daughter graduates this year too, so I'm in the same boat as many of you. Um, and Holly had a daughter who graduated last year, right? So um, we know what you're talking about and asking for. And I, that very fair questions. <laughs> if you have input, please see your school. Let them know what your input is. Um, okay, so Sage thinks he or she has it, basically group A Monday and 
Thursdays, they're doing morning, still online, then they start school 11.15 to 2.10 in person. Yes. You got well, it, Lakes Sage. and Clover Park. Yes, at Lakes and Clover Park, yes. There was a question and it may be answered, but I thought it might be a good one to ask out loud. And that is for a student who is in Running Start and only has one eighth period class. Um, do they need to go twice that day online and then back in person? How does that work? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that works with our running start schedule. Um, but yes, um, it is accumulation of the time both spent in period eight in the morning and period eight in the afternoon. But you may have to work with your teacher on that one to make sure it doesn't uh, conflict with your running start schedule. Okay. Um, okay, this was this was okay. This was back for the parent with the who asked the graduation question, which was great. Um, how do we make re recommendations to students and faculty so when they are making decisions like this, based on knowing people that have family from out of state and out of country, who basically who's the best person to give their input to? I certainly would let the principal of the building know what your um, interests are or concerns are about graduation, um, and they're easily contacted through email. So again, still some confusion that there's both a, a morning component and then an afternoon in-person component. So think so, about them as um, 75 minutes in total. It's 30 minutes in the morning, 40 minutes, 45 minutes roughly in the afternoon. So you're really trying to make a 75 minute period on that day between so this, both yeah. being virtual and in-person. So this is why we're calling this a hybrid Yes. Um, schedule. So you're, you do have some online stuff when on the days that you are going in person, you still do your morning online beginning at 725. And then you would come in the afternoon. It's not either or you don't get to choose either or it, it's actually both. It's both those days. Yeah. Do buses have last names on the seats so they know where so students know where they're sitting with assigned seats? Um, no, it's not that. Um, advance at this point, um, it'd be more about just knowing uh, the bus driver, knowing who's getting on the bus and where they're gonna be, um, sit on the bus. Basically remember we're loading from the back to the front. So if you're the first on the bus, you're gonna be in the back of the bus. If you're last on the bus, you're gonna be in the front of the bus. Yes, back to front doesn't mean you enter in the back of the bus. You enter <laughs> the front of the bus like <laughs> always, you just go to the back seat. And go all the way to the back. Yes. Um, and one of the questions was asked, are students going to be able to interact with other grades or are they, st are they going to be kept in their, in their grade groupings? So what's interesting at, in high school, um, which is different than middle school, is um, uh, many of uh, high school students' classes are mixed grade levels, right? So um, if you're in period one band, you might be with a ninth, 10th, 11th, and a 12th grader, right? So um, Whoever is in that class, you'll be attending with that class in that class, who's in A through L or M through Z. Okay, Melody asks, isn't asynchronous time something the student chooses to do on their own time? Yes, it could be um, based on what their availability is, right? But there are assignments posted to asynchronous or activities or videos, all that is required for the student to do right in order to uh, pass that class. So I'm sure, right, if something conflicts with you being able to be taking part during that online time at, let's say, 12 to 1240, you certainly can conduct it later in the evening, like at five or six, or um, I don't know, my daughter might be doing something at 10 p.m. at night, right? So uh, that is totally possible. We're really asking students to do that work that's assigned that day, right? Okay, we're, we're coming up against our, we're kind of, do we have a little bit of a hard stop? Not a little bit, we do, it's six. <laughs> and so it's 557 right now. Um, uh, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but last name starts with a T in the 10th grade. When does this student come? What is their, what is the student's first day? Oh, here oh, we go. Magic. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that great? So you're, you're, there you go. So there's ninth grade schedule, 10th grade, there's 10th 
11th and 12th grade. Remember, ninth comes first, then our 12th graders come back. All right, let's see, any last questions before we're, we're gonna say goodbye. How do students get their Z pass for the bus? My child will be driving, but in the event they will have to take the bus, she may need one. So they'll be um, passed out at the school in that first or probably first, well, first week for sure for the ninth graders and then um, probably more so in the second week for the um, 12th, and 10th and 11th graders, right? So um, we have them all available and all ready for the students and they'll be passed out at the schools um, when the student attends. Yeah, so even if they're, you know, they're not scheduled to come back until March 15th, not to worry, right. we'll get that. Not to worry. Not to worry. You don't have to show up on the wrong day to get that. No. Nope. Just come on your regular day you're assigned. All right. I think that we've we've also been answering so um, huge thank you to your great team behind the scenes answering all these these questions. Again, if you have any questions that we weren't able to answer as it is 559, please talk to your school. Some are very school specific. Please do reach out to your, your school counselor, your school administration team, or even your school teachers. And many of them are planning to send out a lot of information after this presentation. So you'll be getting an onslaught of calls and emails and text messages from your schools in the next couple of days. And if you missed any portion of this presentation and you wanted to see the slides that you may have missed, please go to the school district's website and there's an icon return to learning. Just click on that and then you'll see the high school uh, presentation and you can review that. But I think that's all the time we have. Yep. All right, well, thank you everyone. Have a great thank first you. day of school for those ninth graders who are brand new to high school. And thank you all for, uh, for joining us tonight. And this is recorded and you can watch it on our YouTube channel. It will probably be there tomorrow. All right, thanks very much. Appreciate it, everyone. Good night.